All right, hi everyone. I thought we'd have a little fun today and do some high key backlit shots. And I normally shoot with natural light here in my studio because I have so much light, but I thought that I would bring in continuous light and strobe for those of you who are using the different types of light sources and have a little bit of fun. It's gonna be super quick. I have got a perfect model behind me. <laughs> can't shoot babies, so we've got fake babies. Can't shoot people, so we've got fake people worked out quite well. Anyway, how many we got joining us? Uh, we have watching? 27 so far. Yay. Hi everyone. Welcome. We are having a little bit of fun this week in the studio. I'm actually going to do a few sort of live shooting demos. We've got this high key backlighting one today and then tomorrow I'm actually going to be shooting with multiple different lenses so I can show you the results from those lenses and different focal lengths and compare them and talk a little bit about you know what happens when we're shooting with those different lenses to our photographs and how we can prevent uh, a few things like distortion it's gonna be lots of fun nice we're so, up to yeah. 44 no just jumped to 51 fantastic well welcome to my studio you don't often get to see a bit of a pullback like that at the moment it's looking fairly empty I'm probably sounding a little echoey because we've moved everything out of the way so we can uh, share this with you but I do love shooting um, natural light in my studio. As you can see behind me, I have incredible windows that are floor to ceiling and they let in so much light. Um, so it is gonna be a bit bright, but I'm gonna shoot with natural light first and then I'm gonna block out that natural light. We'll move around to our continuous light and then over here we'll shoot with our strobe light as well. So I'll just move my, my model around as we do this. A few things to kind of consider when you are shooting backlit images is obviously you've got to consider that light source and how big it is and how much light it's going to provide you to be able to expose your shots in a way that you keep all the detail in the foreground so on you know this side of the model so you can see all of those beautiful skin tones and keep detail in um, you know the fabrics and things like that depending on the tone of those and obviously the the way that you are capturing that light in the background if you are diffusing your windows with curtains sheer curtains and you'll notice you know as the curtain gathers it'll kind of you know go back and forth and sometimes when you are trying to get those you know beautiful high key backlit shots with sheer curtains you'll notice that you'll blow out the highlights in you know in some areas and then there'll be detail in the curtains in others and it can often be a little bit of a you know a pain in the butt so to edit and then and this is where we've got to consider our exposure so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the exposure that I'm going to use the Sun is coming out it was actually raining <laughs> about an hour ago here in Brisbane so we had an overcast day and now the Sun's coming out and it's going to be really bright um, anyway so depending when you're shooting with natural light obviously you're going to be focusing on adjusting your shutter speed and your aperture you're going to set your ISO according to the amount of light that's coming through so now that I've got so much light coming through I can adjust my ISO bring it down a little bit wait I'll three use... seconds there'll be another cloud soon yeah, I reckon <laughs> it's always the way and I can sort of feel it going down a little bit now um, and then the same exposure rules are going to apply when you're shooting with continuous light and then when we move over to strobe this is where you're going to set your ISO because you can change the output of your strobe you can change the output obviously of your continuous light but you know when I've got my continuous light here at hundred percent it's going to pretty much resemble my big my big windows it's going to give me the same amount of light so I don't really need to change my settings too much when I go from natural to continuous but when I turn over, when I will, sorry, when I move over to my strobe, I'm going to be shooting with a bronze color light today. It's an 800 watt light. So my light settings are going to be different to your light settings, depending on the type of light you've got and its wattage, how powerful that light is. And obviously your um, modifier. How big is your modifier? You know, how much are you diffusing your modifier? Do you have, you know, more layers inside that light that's going to diffuse it even more? Things like that. So there's a lot to consider in terms of your exposure. So what settings I use today will be different for you because of the amount of light that you're going to be working with and the type of light source as well. So yeah, if you've got any questions, pop them into the group and into the comments here and I can try and answer those. But yeah, I'm going to get through this pretty quick and just show you some results. 
I've dressed my model in white because I often see a lot of photos of people trying to get those beautiful backlit shots and the problems that we, we tend to have are losing details in the foreground whilst we're trying to you know, bring that exposure up to blow out the background to get that high key shot. So I'm not going to use a reflector today. This is all about my camera and its capabilities and how I adjust the settings to capture the amount of light coming in and then keep detail in my model. Often what we find when we've got pregnant women and their belly sticking out like this, where that light is coming through and spilling across the belly there from the side, and if they're wearing white, we tend to overexpose that. And this is where you, you will start to blend you know, your, the outline, the, the shape of your person, your subject, with the background and you lose detail in a lot of those highlights. So this is where it is incredibly important to shoot with your histogram up on the back of your camera. I've got mine always on the back of my camera and it's going to tell me whether or not I'm overexposing uh, my subject. Obviously it's going to tell me I'm overexposing my background but this is the one one time that I do like to really push those highlights in my background and blow them out because if I'm going to be printing a beautiful high key shot like this I don't need all of that detail in the background. Um, if you want to keep all of the detail in your background then you have to keep an eye on your exposure and you may need to bring in a reflector to fill your foreground if you're going to bring that exposure down to keep all the detail in the background. So it's a personal preference, it's entirely up to you, but I want to encourage you to play a little bit with some different ways to photograph. Get your kids in front of windows, start shooting and seeing the different results that you can create because when you're filling your client galleries, you want to give them as much variety as you possibly can. Alrighty, we've got someone from Canada watching. Hi! Someone's loving the lives, yeah, we're loving doing them. And we've had a lot of fun over the past six and a half weeks. We're in week seven now. It's kind of <laughs> crazy to think about how fast this time has gone. But I think that's what's got us through. Being busy, staying productive, and focused on doing something every day. Yeah, and that's definitely. how it's made this time go by really quickly. Obviously, we don't know how much longer we've got to get through this, but um, we're, we're getting there. Slowly but surely. It is happening. Alrighty, so I'm looking at this amount of light and it has gone down a little bit um, in terms of that brightness. It may come back, but again, when we're shooting on cloudy days like today, you just never know what's gonna happen at any given time. So when you're shooting with natural light and you're shooting with continuous, um, sorry, well, not so much continuous, but when you're shooting with natural light and it's continually changing, um, because of the conditions outside, then you will need to keep adjusting your exposure in camera. All right, so I'm looking at the light. I'm going to bring my ISO up to, let's go to 500 to start with, because I want to let as much light as I possibly can into my image and, um, and, and to get that exposure right. I'm going to keep my aperture quite wide, so I'm going to take it down to 2.8. And this is where it's going to open that aperture up again to let more light in. And this is how we start to, you know, increase that exposure by bringing up all of that information in our histogram. All right, so I'm just pointing my camera here at my subject and I'm holding in my exposure there to have a little look at where my, my shutter's looking. Okay, so if I shot this at two full stops overexposed, so when you think about the meter in, the, in your camera, and I'm having a look here at the little meter at the top there, You've got the middle of your meter, and then you've got plus one, plus two, plus three, and then a couple of little dots in between. They're your thirds of a stop. But if I go two, two full stops overexposed here, this is gonna give me a good ind indication because I want my exposure to be high. I want it to be nice and bright, high key. But that's gonna give me a good indication to start with in terms of can I push those details any higher? I'm probably gonna go up three stops, but I always, my first shot's always kind of like my safe shot in terms of exposure. So it gives you, it's just gonna give you a really good indication as to how much more you can really push that. But again, when you're shooting in your own space, like I know my, my environment and I know my camera, so I already kind of know what my settings are gonna be. But when you're sort of, 
you know, still becoming familiar with the different locations and environments that you're going to be shooting in and your tools, um, start safe and then have a look at that exposure and that information in terms of your histogram, not the thumbnail, and follow, um, follow that to give you a really good guide. Okay, so I'm going to frame my subject. She is in the middle of my frame and I'm going to focus on that beautiful hair. <laughs> if I was shooting a real person, I would be focused on the eye closest to the camera. So I'm going to shoot this at two stops overexposed at 2.8. Now I'm having a look there. I have got, and I'm, I'm tethered here, so you're going to see my shot there. I have not ex overexposed that image at all. Looking at my histogram, it's obviously telling my back, my, I've got my highlight warning on, which is always a really good thing to have when you're shooting bright high key images, um, because then visually you can see it. But I know by looking at my histogram, I've still got quite a bit of space there and room to move so I can bring that exposure up. So this is where I'm actually gonna go up three stops overexposed. So another full stop up to there we go and that light is just continuously changing alrighty so that's exactly where I want it to be I've got detail in my dress I've got detail oh, wow. in the flowers everywhere there is a little bit of um, highlight sort of warning coming through the sleeve here because it's lace and it's see-through now, if that was a real person, there would be an arm in there, so I wouldn't actually be having any problems right now with that. So it's just where it is a little bit thinner and it's coming through, There's, it's giving me a bit of a highlight warning there, but I'm completely okay with that. All right, so that's pretty much my shot in terms of exposure. Now, if I'm shooting silhouettes and things like that, this is where you can obviously change your exposure. So I'm gonna bring down my ISO Let's bring it down to say 200. You can bring it down to 100 depending on your light. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down my exposure in terms of my shutter speed. So I'm now going to shoot this in the middle of my meter. But I've adjusted my exposure by changing my ISO. So now if I want to start to darken my image, to create a bit more of a moody sort of look, um, I want to bring that exposure back, so that information. But looking there at my histogram, I've not underexposed anything and I have detail in all of my shadows. So this is again going to be something that you, um, you know, will decide on based on your personal preference. All right, someone has just asked, what is over the window? This is a frosted window, so it's actually two panes of glass, and in between the two panes is a white frosting. It was actually really hard to find these because most um, you know, frosted windows that you buy where it's like this, it doesn't have the film on the outside or the inside, but most, um, most sort of frosted windows like this tend to have a tone, like a, a color tone to them, and it's usually green, which wasn't so nice. But thankfully, my brother-in-law is a glazier and he was able to source these particular windows for us. So we did a lot of investigating to find the right windows for this space. And I just use polystyrene sheets um, and V-flats to block them out when I don't want to use natural light. Um, just going to bring up a really okay. underexposed um, camera angle here ah. so people can kind of see that it is literally just a frame and it is glass. Yeah, so it's, it's perfect, um, right? It's pretty amazing stuff. So at home, when I had my home, um, when I had my home studio, I just had you know big glass sliding doors, and they were you know see through. And what I did was I used sheer curtains from IKEA, and I, I I bought a heap of them and I bunched them up as much as I could to help diffuse the light because I had a lot of direct light based on the direction of that my house faces. Um, and where those windows were, I had to diffuse the light a lot to really soften it down. Whereas when I shot in a previous home studio, which was on the other side of my house, away from any light, direct light or anything like that, it was, it was so dark, I barely had to diffuse the light um, at all to soften it because it was 
yeah, so it, it'll just depend on your light, you know, and, and whereabouts that is facing there. So someone has just said that they can't get the histogram up on your camera. Mm. Depending on the your make and model, if you, yeah, get your manual out and or go to the internet and type in your camera make and model and ask how to bring up the histogram because yeah. you definitely should be able to bring up the histogram on mm, your most camera. Most of the time it's in preview mode, not while you're shooting, just yeah. in preview mode. So for me, I'm obviously shooting with Canon because I'm a Canon girl. Um, here, then obviously when I press play, I've got my little info button and then I push that and it bring, and I push that a couple of times and it brings up the histogram. Yeah. So yeah, um, have a have a look and play with your settings and you you should be able to um, to get that right. All right, so let's block this window out and turn on our continuous light. That certainly made a difference to my camera. <laughs> <laughs> and what are we going for now? All right, so this is my Godox continuous light. Now, I don't have a massive softbox on here. This is um, one, what was this one? 150? I think it's 150. Yeah, 150 centimeters. Just turn it this way just a little bit. All righty, let's move our model. For those of you wondering how my model grew a belly, it's my fake maternity belly. <laughs> All right, so I've got her there in the center of that light. This is where I would, you know, turn a little bit so I'm seeing more of that shape but have them on that angle. And I'm gonna bring her back a little bit. Now, the further away I have, the less light source that I have to create that background. Now, the only thing when you're using artificial light um, that is going to really impact the overall finish of your images is the fact that you, you may not get the entire background of your image may not be filled with that beautiful light. So you might have to do a little bit of post-production there. The closer, obviously, I bring her to my light source, you know, the more risk that I run in overexposing some of the details um, in that dress because being closer, obviously, we're going to have a little bit more intense light there. So whenever I do this with a softbox, I try to make the softbox as straight as I possibly can, as flat, so it's not angled in, if that makes sense. It's nice and straight like that. So the ex the settings on this light, that it is currently at 100%. Hang up, just gonna get it a bit straighter. That's better. Yeah, that's nice and straight now. It was just on a slight angle. Alrighty. So same sort of rules apply. With, nat with continuous light to natural light, Okay, so I'm going to have a little look here, and if I come in, and I'm zoomed in at a 70mm focal length, right? So right now, if I remove the background, as in the, the black octo box that you can see around the edges there, then I'm so close that the bottom of my frame is cutting through here. Great if you're not taking a portrait of um, a pregnant woman, and it's just of a person or a couple, but to get all of that beautiful space around here, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of work in post-production. So this is where I'm gonna shoot and keep in some of that softbox, but just make sure I've got the bottom and the top of my frame where I want it, and it's just going to be the corners there. All right, so at the moment, if I shot that in the middle of my meter, so let's go reverse. All right, so that's where I'm going to shoot it a little bit more moodier. You can see those corners there. So obviously a bigger softbox is going to give you a bigger background. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see I've got lots of detail there and I'm looking at the back of my camera, my histogram, and I have not underexposed any of those shadows. So there's no blacks, black blacks in there and there's gonna be detail everywhere, which is where I, what I want. And what I love when you shoot like this is just that little bit of light that sort of falls off 
and those highlights and shadows, you know, create those beautiful curves um, and that shape around your subject. So now if I want to um, bring in more light to fill my foreground in terms of my subject, if I couldn't adjust my exposure anymore, this is where I'd probably bring in a big reflector. But then obviously with a reflector, it's going to have to be quite big. And then if you're not as tall as me, trying to shoot over a big reflector is going to be a bit of a bit of an issue. So this is why I'm focusing more on camera and exposure. So because I brought my ISO down with the natural light to 200, this is where I'm actually going to bring my ISO up again to let's go back up to 500 and have a little look at our exposure again. Get that camera strap out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna take it back up now to three stops overexposed. And have a look at that, see the detail. So I've got a little bit of overexposure there in those highlights, but that's obviously gonna be where that, you know, that really bright and full intensity in the center of that softbox is gonna come through. So that's kind of the exposure that I'm going for. I've got lots of detail in my subject in all of those beautiful flowers. And um, yeah, I haven't bumped up my ISO too much and I don't really need to do too much to the actual subject itself um, in terms of editing or retouching because I don't, and then, sorry, therefore I don't mind having my ISO up a little bit higher, but ISO 500 is nothing to be concerned about based on our camera, the quality of the cameras that we use today. All new digital SLR cameras and, you know, their ability to capture, you know, a lot of information at a higher ISO is improving with every new camera that comes onto the market. It's, the, the, it's really quite amazing. But if I'd shot that at 500 ISO, and let's just say that I'd really underexposed it and then in post-production I tried to lift it, that's where I'm going to start to see in those shadows when I start to lift that exposure in post-production, all of that grain and noise. So now that I know that I've got the exposure right and I don't need to do that, and this is what I teach in getting it right in camera, over and over again, get your exposure right so you don't have to do too much. All I've got to do looking at that photograph would be maybe a little bit of skin retouching. <laughs> um, she, she looks a bit dry. <laughs> a little pasty. Um, and just adjust the, um, the corners there where the Octobox is um, kind of coming through. Make sense? How are we going, everyone? I'm talking Really, a lot really fast. good. So yep. which Godox are you using for your continuous? Okay, so this one here is, so I get it right, is the SL 200 watt Godox. And that's just a Godox softbox that I got from B&H for 49 bucks. And we use this for a lot. Like yes. most of the lives that we do where Kelly's sitting down, that will be her main light source. Um, and we usually just feather it off quite nicely with that Octobox on it. So we pretty much use it for everything now. Yeah. It's great. So this Octobox is a little bigger. I'm just having a look, it's just on a little bit of a lean there. All right, so depending on your strobe and its wattage, this is a 150 Octobox, so that must be a 140 over there because it's slightly smaller, or even a 120, 30, I can't remember. But anyway, this is a 150 <laughs> Octobox. <laughs> Things like that, you know, they don't really bother me. <laughs> All right, so looking at my, my model, I've got her posed beautifully in the center there of my Octobox. I've got a fair bit more space, obviously, around her. You're not really gonna be able to get a full length shot with something like this. But you know what you could have a lot of fun with? If you've got a really big Octobox, get it down nice and low to the ground and maybe get your model on the ground. If they're pregnant, get them side on, kneeling on their knees. Um, you can have so much fun with different shapes and things like that if you want to get er you know everything in there But what I love about photographing like this is you can get a couple together the baby in the middle You can create you know some really beautiful results Okay, so again camera settings are going to be slightly different here This is where I'm going to change my ISO and I'm going to bring it back down to 100 
because I'm going to have a lot of light coming through here at, with an 800 watt strobe. And if I have a look at my settings, what am I? Now I've currently got it on five, on an output of five. This goes up to obviously 10, so it's about halfway, or it is halfway, you know, obviously, five's half of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking to myself randomly now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna bring my ISO, like I said, down to 100. This is where I need to consider now the aperture and my shutter speed as well. So I'm gonna bring my shutter speed up to about 200 because that's actually the desired shutter speed, you know, for this particular light and my camera. Um, so I'm gonna change my shutter speed, bring that up to 200. And then with my aperture, this is how I'm going to determine obviously how much light comes in and um, into my frame but I can also control obviously the output of my, my strobe at obviously at the back of it or on my camera here. So I'm gonna start at five and I'm gonna shoot this at 2.8 obviously, my aperture, and then we're going to make some adjustments if we need to. So again, at 70 mil, I'm gonna get my composition right. She's in the middle of my frame. I can see a little bit of those black corners there, but that's going to be nice and easy. All right. So yeah, that's um, pretty perfect. <laughs> Let's just bring that up for everyone. One moment. At halfway. So oh, there if we go. I had wow. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Look at that. Now that all right, so I've got a little bit of a highlight warning happening just on her shoulder here at the back where it's white and it is the brightest. So this is where I can turn the output of my light down to let less light out, or I can simply in camera adjust my exposure here. So what I'm actually gonna do is change my aperture. I don't need this to be soft. Um, obviously, you know, if I'm shooting it at 2.8, it's going to have that beautiful depth of field, that fall off, it's going to be lovely. But it doesn't need it, you know, there's lots of detail going on here. And if you're shooting a couple holding a baby and they're not on the same focal plane, you would definitely adjust your aperture so that you're making sure that everybody in the frame is in focus. Um, and you're getting it right there. So, number one, I can change the, the light at the back or I can simply change my aperture here. So what I'm going to do is bring it up to, let's go to F4 to have a look. That's quite a drastic change when there was only a little bit of overexposure. But let's have a look at F4 and see what happens there. Now I can see that it's starting to get a little darker. I'm keeping all of the detail now um, in my subject. But yeah, I kind of am going to risk it and I'm actually going to adjust it and let a little bit more light in because I do want it brighter. So we're going to take it to 3.2. Yeah, that's more like it. Perfect. Yay. So there is a oh, little bit of information wow. hitting the end of the histogram, but that's the light behind, and I'm okay with losing information there. So obviously when I get these, cam these photographs in, um, downloaded and on my computer, I'm gonna have a little bit more of a better look around the image to see obviously where I've get lost detail, what you know is in, um, in, within the histogram in terms of information, but I'm really happy with that, I'm not really, got any two concerns. Now if I wanted to create a darker sort of moodier look here, obviously I want to let less light into my camera. So this is where I could continue to increase that aperture, take it up to let's just say f7.1 or f8, or I could bring down the amount of light that's coming through there. But do you know what? Let's make it really easy and let's just change the aperture and create something that's a little darker and let's turn her actually. So we get a bit more light on these beautiful curves. Oh yeah. Her figure's so perfect, it's like she was man-made. Yeah, oh, I can't do anything with those arms. 
<laughs> we were going to stuff them with wadding, oh, but that looked a bit funny. <laughs> yeah, that would actually. I've got a clamp sticking out at the back there that's holding that dress in place because she's, you know, she's a bit light on it. All right, so let's take it up to, let's go, let's go eight, F8 first and have a look at that. Oh. Okay, There's a so little bit of information there in those shadows oh, wow. that's really close to the edge of the frame. But you know what that is? That's that bottom left corner and that top left corner that's not going to have any detail. But let's just say that you wanted to keep just a little bit more information in there. This is where you might adjust your aperture again and let a bit more light in. Let's take it back to 7.1. beautiful okay so then if you wanted to do like a full-on silhouette you would obviously have turn your light down and adjust your settings again in camera to create that beautiful silhouette but I love detail and I love the way that light falls across shape and that's what it's all about so yeah I hope you enjoyed that little question here does the white balance change between the different light sources well I'm shooting in raw so it doesn't really matter yeah. <laughs> but yes, it will. It'll depend. Um, but you've look. You're looking at my photographs, so I'm actually shooting on auto white balance because I know that I can make any adjustments later on um, in post production. But I'm also shooting in a beautiful white studio. I've got no color casts coming through. The color temperature to my eye looks pretty neutral. But you know that would all depend on your space and obviously what you're wanting to do. But yeah. I'm shooting that at auto white balance and I'm pretty happy with those details. But yeah, when you're shooting in raw, um, you, don't, you shouldn't really have to worry too much about that. So someone has said, can you use additional light and feather it, feather it for a different look? Do you know what? Play, have fun. Just make sure when you're using different light sources um, that they are obviously going to be the same color temperature. That's where that's going to matter. This is where I'm using a daylight balanced LED continuous light. And if I'm going to you know, th want to bring in more light, I'm gonna obviously want to use either another daylight continuous LED light with, this, with the same color temperature. Um, and mine are adjustable so I can do that. Or I'm just gonna use a white reflector to bounce in that light that's coming from behind, um, from a different direction. And then you can do the exact same thing with strobe, bring in a reflector. And I would do that before I would probably introduce another artificial light. So yeah. All right, we've got a few questions, but do you know what? This was just a really quick, fun shoot that I wanted to share with you today and get you guys, I don't know, a little excited about picking up the camera, playing with different things, have some fun. Like I said, play, explore and experiment and you learn so much in the process. I have done so many creative concept shoots um, with a vision in mind and not never really, I mean, most of the, well, um, <laughs> I was going to say, you know, I don't always achieve the results that I, you know, that I visualize. But I do often obviously achieve the results that I'm going for because there's a lot of planning in, in the process to, to get it right. But sometimes it's about playing, come up with an idea and think about the different ways that you could light the subject because when it comes to lighting, you know, it's going to create mood, it's going to create impact, it's going to, to help, you know, with your, in terms of your composition and obviously um, it is the most important thing the, you know to us as photographers in the way that we capture it so yeah have fun play um, thanks for joining me I'll see you tomorrow we're going to talk all about lenses and focal length and uh, compare some of those and it's going to be really cool bye awesome. have a good day <laughs>